Hey guys, Adam from Equip to Endor. Well, as you can see behind me, the old, we have the old Equip to Endor fire pit in my backyard. It needs a little bit of maintenance. Get some tall, get some tall grass growing up there. So we're going to work on that. Uh, and one other thing too is I'm going to build a fire bed drill for you guys to show you guys. It's, it's, a fire bed's a cool technique. It really works really, really great in the winter time uh, during colder weather. But another thing it does is in the summertime when you guys are packing ultra light out there and you don't want to carry a big sleeping bag or you don't think a sleeping bag is necessary in case you get a cold snap for whatever reason or if it gets colder than you expect in the nighttime it's a great way to keep warm so you won't need the need of a sleeping bag or a blanket. Uh, one cool thing about it too is multifunctional you can use it to cook on, to sleep on and also it'll it'll control your fire to make sure that you know your fire is out so you don't have to worry about starting any fires or anything after you leave so your site. One, cool, one quick thing about the fire bed basically you're going you're to dig a hole a pretty wide hole, man-sized hole, about six to eight inches deep. Uh, have a good bed of coals throughout there. You can do your cooking on there and all your kitchen work prep and everything. And then once you're done, uh, you can cover it up with dirt, pine needles, and other things like that to kind of make a nice cushy bed with about two to three, three inches worth of material. Now one thing that I always do when I make them is I throw some green material on top of the coals before I start to bury them. That produces a lot of smoke, and if the smoke's not escaping, if you don't see a lot of visible smoke escaping, you know that, that your uh, bedding is, is pretty well contained. Now, one thing I gotta tell you guys is you need a lot of prep time to make a fire bed. Now, a lot of time before you go to bed because it takes time for the ground to heat. The other thing is, is the ground might become too hot for you to lay, lay comfortably in the middle of the night. They are very well insulated, and depending on what kind of wood you're using or and how, how deep the embers were, they can, uh, they, can sell, they can stay insulated for a good long while. Another caution to be concerned with is if you're building them on top of a root system, you have a chance of igniting that root system. That root system can actually burn for miles. Uh, so you got to be careful with that as well, because a lot of a lot of older forests where, where roots are intermingled in the ground, you can actually start a fire in one location, and that fire can continue underground on a root system and lead to a fire in separate locations. So when you guys are constructing these, make sure you're watching around for root systems. You know, the trees in my backyard are relatively young. I think my oldest tree here is probably 100 years old. So I don't have to worry about that as much. The system, the root system isn't gonna be as, as spread out. So we're gonna get started here and start digging something up. The first thing I wanna talk about is your digging stick. You know, if you don't have a shovel, and uh, one thing I try to look for for a digging stick is a nice crotch in the tree. This will be a little bit stronger as a focal point when you're in there, you know, digging out the material. The other thing is you can use this material to kind of measure your weight, your width. So I know when I'm down there, I wanna dig until this stick can safely fit inside the area that I'm going to start my bed. And another you know, cool me measurement is, is the same distance from your head to the toe is fingertip to fingertip. So you can measure this the width wise and then length wise you can measure you know, using your hand to make sure your hold is, is big enough. So we're going to get started here in a second. We're going to get that dug out and start a fire, cook on the fire and then we'll be back to talk to you about the details of the fire pit. We'll be right back. Okay guys, so we got our rocks moved away. Here's my fire pit area over here and you can see I have a tarp right here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put the dirt on top of the tarp. So when I'm ready to throw the dirt back onto the hole, it's very easy to transfer it. And also I can really transfer it nice and evenly. So that's a, just a quick tip. Anytime that you guys want to you know, dig out a hole, especially uh, out in the woods or something, you want it easier to transfer the dirt, throw a tarp down, throw the dirt on the tarp. That way you can move it a lot easier and fill that hole as you need to fill it. So, all right, we're going to get to digging. And we'll all right, guys, we've got our hole dug out here over here. One thing that I didn't do correctly I started getting too fast into it. As you guys can see the difference between where the tarp is, the tarp should be right there on the edge. Uh, but that's, can you guys even see that? But that's okay, we're gonna make it work anyway. All right, so here's the area that we have. It's been enough for me to lay my torso inside. I'm not gonna have, you know, my feet are gonna kick out a little bit, but that's gonna be all right. And uh, one other bonus that this is gonna do, it's gonna aerate the, the earth a little bit, so it's gonna be a lot softer sleep for me once I put the dirt back on there and taking out all the rocks and everything else. Hey buddy, in your place. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and start making our fire structure. So the first thing we're gonna do is I got a, a lot of boards here from uh, our baton, the toning test for our large blade knives. We're gonna spread these out over the length of the fire pit. Now this is not gonna be our fire structure itself but this is going to ensure that we have a lot of ashes by the end of dinner tonight and I'm actually going to do 
a few fires on here and it gives you guys some examples of some different techniques. Now one good thing is there's a little bit of concavity to this, this ditch, so there's going to be plenty of air underneath all of these individual pieces of wood. Alright, so the next step is we're going to make a couple of different structures. One, one structure I'm going to make over here is your, your standard log cabin type structure. Over here we're going to do more of your bonfire or teepee type structure. Whichever one you guys like to put in these, call these structures is actually going to be the amount of light they create and how fast they burn. Of course, the teepee is going to burn faster, brighter, and hotter. It's good for uh, actually cooking fires because it's gonna, you're going to get that bed of coals very, very quickly. Alright guys, let me put it and stone these fires together and get them started and then we'll come back. Well, if you guys can see, got a little too close to the fire right there, a little sizzled, some sizzled arm hair. Mm, love that smell. Alright, well, the TP structure over here already collapsed and I've already put some larger logs on there. And as you can see the uh, log cabin type, it's still burning a little bit slower. I've started putting some material in the middle now um, just to even out the fire. Uh, it's doing pretty well. As you can see it's burning pretty pretty bright and pretty hot. It's still cooking more uh, over towards the, uh, the left side there for you guys. Over here. The uh, log cabin is actually burning better on the left side because of the heat coming off of the teepee structure fire. And let's place that large log in the middle with some other stuff uh, under there to kind of bridge the two, just to kind of get it burning. So all the wood can burn down, uh, so we're going to let that burn for a little bit. I'm going to go in and eat, so we'll be back here real soon. Hopefully it won't be dark by the time we get back out here. Alright guys. Tell you right now guys, I can barely stand being over top of this. Got some uh, green wood right here. A poplar tree. Fill the poplar. Alright, nice and smoky. That's all we need. What let's do is line some rocks on top of this. That'll keep the air and keep some more, more of the heat. But some of these rocks that I have might be some really thin shell stuff, so this stuff can explode, so we're not going to put any rocks in there, just the dirt. Alright guys, we got our first level of dirt on there, probably a good two to three inch pad. Now one thing that is not going to happen instantly, it's not instantly going to be hot. It's going to take a little now, bit this, of time. This is an important part, playing the waiting game here. You're going to have to wait a little bit for the coals to heat up the ground. So you want to add the dirt a little bit at a time, and you want to make sure you have enough time before you go to bed. Now. One problem with this, if you don't put up enough dirt on there, and you kind of got to play around with this and do this a few times so you get, to, you get accustomed to it, is it gets too hot, and then you won't be able to sleep on there. Now another thing is, this thing could stay pretty warm for hours. I'm talking about when I come back tomorrow, and hopefully I'll get a chance to come back out here tomorrow, and I'll still be able to feel a, a difference in the ground next to it and on top of the coals. So it's going to insulate those coals that are still burning in there, just very, very slow. So. There's no place for the heat to go. Heat gained is heat lost. So the only place where it's going to lose heat is on the top surface. It's not going to lose any heat underground. All right. So we're going to let that heat up a little bit, and then we're going to come back and uh, see how it's doing. All right, guys, we'll be right back. Hey, guys. All right. Well, we probably let an hour or two go by. As you can see, we're losing a little bit of light here, but I can already feel the ground warming up. Pretty good amount. Hey, buddy. What's going on? <laughs> no, go to your place. Go. Uh, there are some creepy crawlies, like some worms and everything, evacuating right now, so it's definitely heating up for them. So, this is a pretty successful venture. Hope you guys learned something there. I hope you guys like this uh, fire bed. If you guys give it a try, let me know what you think. And if you tried this before, if you have any other suggestions or tips how to make it better, that, uh, stuff that I missed out on. Of course, we could use the rocks, but we didn't really have any rocks here. We have my fire pit rocks, but I'm not going to use those. So if you guys have any questions or comments, please email me at adam at equip to adore. Hey buddy, seats, lots. Uh, Ace says goodbye too. Good boy. <laughs> you guys take care, be safe out there, remember.
If you're not always prepared, you're never prepared. Thanks. What are you doing? What are you doing?